A Negro GI returns from the war in Vietnam to his conflict in the ghetto. Colonel Donaldson would like to personally welcome you to the Personnel Center. Uh, you're in Oakland, California, in case you don't know it, across the Bay Bridge from San Francisco, California, home to the topless, bottomless, sideless, you name it. For those of you that haven't eaten, dinner or breakfast will include T-bone steak, French fries, apple pie, and all the cold, fresh milk you can drink. Okay, we have a lot of processing to do. Hey, Take it easy, man. We'll see you later, man. Nice meeting you. Hope you have good luck. Okay. Take it easy, Take man. It. A lot of the guys are on the plane with me for the baiting. Whether I, should, whether I should wear my uniform home or not. So I said myself, I said, I'm going to wear mine. I'm a Negro, and I'm proud of it. And I went over there, and I fought, and I did what I had to do. I'll do it again if time came. If you're a Negro, man, and you got a family, I mean, I can always find something to keep my little girl. If I ain't got to do nothing but go out there on the dock and sell bananas. See, a lot of people give up too easy. If I'd have gave up overseas, I'd have been dead by now. How did the Negro soldiers over there felt when they had all the rides, especially the rides here in Chicago? How did they feel about that? They feel pretty bad because they don't feel that, uh, they don't see why they would have to uh, fight two different wars. It's more like togetherness over there. Yeah. When I came back uh, in 65, uh, now we had a lot of fellows that had mixed emotions about the situation, you know, and uh, after they watched a uh, riot and everything, a rebellion, what do you want to call it? A lot of guys felt that uh, the people are fighting for a just cause here, and I do feel you see, that we're fighting for a just cause. And all this money is being spent, you know, in a situation over there to protect and give them freedom. And yet I got to come back here and get my freedom, uh, shall I say, on installment, or not really giving it all to me. I got to wait. You would go back? If I would go back. And I don't think that none of the guys that served with me that I knew that came in with me that wouldn't go back. Not unless it was something very serious. What, why is that? Because I feel that I, I'm still a United States citizen and I had that, that duty to do. But are you a uh, first class citizen? This is a uh, first class. <coughs> That's a pretty good question. That's a hard question to answer. I, I don't have the answer myself, you know. But there is a friend of mine and uh, you know, I'd like to introduce you to a fellow named Reverend James Bevel. There's another police car right behind us again. See, you know, you have to see everything. I mean, I'm gonna show you how to. I'm gonna show you how to watch people, and to show you why people look like they look. See, now you see that man there with the red thing on. See, see how he's walking. The problem is that he has worked all of his life and for nothing, pulling and carrying a load. And he exemplified in his very body. That's a used man. You see what I mean? And he's accepted the fact that he was used. You see, you walk in a community and you look at it. And you ask who owned it? Who owned the store? You see? Who owned the business? You see what I mean? The buildings, the businesses, all are owned by the white people. Now, see, see how they do that? They got all to join the WAC, join the army. In other words, they, they give this as an expression of a way out of here, see? See, 300 opportunities to fulfill your military obligation, your obligation to murder folks. Ain't nobody obligated to murder people for white people. You see what I mean? And that's another police car. Now you're gonna start seeing a lot of policemen because they got them on every corner, see? Contrary to a lot of people thinking the ghetto is vicious, all these people are very loving. The ghetto is all that dirt on the street. It's simply because the city will not give these people the services, like they don't sweep the street down here. You get the man's scheme now? You gotta understand, he has so much contempt. And this is a very old black neighborhood where black people have lived, own their houses, see how they keep them up? See? These people are homeowners here. Go to the house. Now here's a beautiful thing. Stop right here. Right here. You see? It said black women committed for the protection and care of our children. And what they're doing is really giving women back their dignity and self-respect. 
because they had sort of lost it. Hey, baby, I'm here to tell you. Hey, my man just came back from Vietnam, man. Just, my man here. My man just came back from Vietnam. What do you get out of the world besides black home? Oh, we got to eliminate them. I'll do a Bible for him, you know, March. All on the time, they got to go, dig. I mean, people that hasn't respect the neighborhood really respect it now. See, now, see the wall of respect them. They say that a prize fighter's main goal is violence. They say that actually every time that I enter the ring, in a way, I'm going to war. They say to me daily, you are a prize fighter, what's the difference? And I like to say to those critics of the press and to the others, that there is one hell of a lot of difference in fighting in the rain and going to war in Vietnam. We are fighting for the minds of our people wherever we are. That. We are fighting to get the minds of the people away from the white man because once he has their mind, he has them hooked line and sink. If they're willing to stop oppressing people, there will be no violence. If they do not, we are going to throw them off our backs by any means necessary. Please do not judge us harshly. For those of us who wanted to lay a foundation for kindness, could not ourselves be kind. And everybody wants a different thing. The hardest part about it is getting started and then getting out. Because you know? what you've been to high school, you don't even know anything, do you? You can't write well anymore. Can you type? No. You mean to tell me that you fought for a government and you, you come out of the high school for that government and you can't even read, write, and type writer? And you have no skills? If I tell you that what you should be doing is study and nobody's really going to be a man, you mean to tell me you don't know whether I'm right or wrong? Huh? Yeah, I know you're yeah. right. How long were you in Vietnam? 13 months. 13 months? Sorry. How many people did you kill? About five, no. Do you love Jonathan as much as you love your family, don't you? No. Why do you kill for Jonathan? I love the government that you people put that. You love the government? You people put him there. The I mean, you people put him there. I didn't put him there. Who put him there? Johnson. And who voted him in there? Who voted him in there? You vote? No, I didn't vote. When Negroes couldn't vote, did you do anything about that? I supported it. Did you go and help fight? No, I didn't go. Why didn't you? Because I had a family. Huh? I had a family. I still well, when, it, when Johnson asked you to go, you leave your family. Once. You know what? You leave your family for white folks, but you won't leave it for black people. So you wanted to go kill the Vietnamese? I didn't want to go kill the Vietnamese, but that's what I was sent to do. By who? If I hadn't went, who was going to say, well, this man is not supposed to go to jail because he didn't go no, to the service? No, you didn't tell me you'd become a killer before you go to jail? That's the only way that I can uh, actually say, well, keep my record clean. Record clean for who? For the white people, right? For myself. For what's that? What record? Don't you understand who you are? I understand what I am, but that don't mean I got to be a... Is your record I don't mean I got to go to prison and... All right, but you are a killer. That is your record, with you. Hmm? You know you're a killer, right? You kill more people in Vietnam than the Negroes kill in Detroit. Did you know that? Jenkins, by himself, killed more Vietnamese than Negroes kill white people. Now, why was you in Vietnam? This riot and broke out in Detroit. I was overseas. And I couldn't see why that he he did that. You couldn't see why they did that. No. You know damn well. You know why those Negroes burn them goddamn stores down. They did that because they've been fucked over by white people and they hate it just like you do. And you know that, don't you? Yeah, I know that. Well, why you have to pretend like you don't know why they burn the stores down? Because you was told by the white folks to say, "Oh, you don't know why Negroes did that." And a greater country where there's peace, justice, 
And you know damn well ain't no peace and justice, don't you? No justice. Now you you know why you kill Vietnamese, but you can't know why niggas run a damn store down. Because they let him come in there. Well, how can they keep him out when the man got the gun? How can the Vietnamese keep the white men out when you're the killing the five of their sons? You kill five young men, boy, goddamn. How are the women gonna be protected? You've got to make a decision now that you're back. Are you gonna educate other black kids? Or just go on and be a, a flunky for the white folks? Oh, look here, man. Come here. Wait, didn't guy, what happened to get the gun up over there? Yeah, I watched the horse. Yeah, man. I look at them jerks like this, man. Why you jump on here, man? Why you jump on here? Frank's my partner from high school. My brother got shot over that motherfucker. Shot dead, Jack. You know. Look at me, look here. Come on, I believe it. I don't think black men should have to go fight. I don't think they have to go fight for a country they're going to get. Will you open that sidewalk, please? Do I have to put 10 men out here in a cordon? Let's go get a drink, man. I want to talk. Yes, what are the y'all? I was supposed to be in the march, man. Right? Walk along with me, I'll talk to you. Do you think you're going to accomplish anything, that is? Well, we're sure going to try. But you're not going to stop to it. We're sure. So they either beat us down or we win. And we're going to win. Why? Because we're right, for one thing. And we're growing. We affirm that a person has a right and a duty to defy the state when he clearly believes that obedience to a draft law, for instance, is for him an immoral and unconscionable act. It's your responsibility to go and kill people who are in the same position you are. No, but the government said it was right. That's what I had been taught. The government, man. That's what I had been taught, see? But you see, that's what but we're you, here. But you know that that's wrong. Well, regardless of whether it was right or wrong, we wrote it, didn't we? We wrote the Constitution. Who wrote it? You wrote it? The Constitution said your that people like you... Your did, right? Not my forefathers, and I don't think they were your forefathers either. And you know who it is that's pointing the gun at our head, because they're standing all around. All people who are intending to turn in their draft cards, or like me, if they have none, statements of non-cooperation, will go down here to the, revol to the revolving door right down in this corner of the building, since all these doors are locked, and now that one will probably be instantly. We got business inside that If I'd have thought of this before I left, they wouldn't have got me over there. But when I left, I thought it was something proud. I'd go over there and fight for two years. Right? He's changed quite a bit, I think. When I went overseas, I learned a lot, man. Are you a uh, first-class citizen? I'm Negro, and I'm proud of it. I went over there and I fought, and I did what Ain't I had to do. Ain't nobody obligated to murder people for white people. Some things you just can't change. You killed like, five young men, boy, goddamn! Yeah, I became a tough. We are going to throw them off our backs by any means necessary. I want to get this job first. That's the epitome of slavery. Well, yeah, they feel man. like driving. Jenkins is a slave. You're trying to overcome. It's a respect for the human. That's black power. That's the essence of black culture. I think he's adjusting himself quite well. You've got to make a decision now that you're back.